Hey friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Puppeteer full tutorial series for absolute beginners. In the last episode, I showed you how to use the method page.content to extract the source code of any web page. That's one of the classic examples of data web scrapping using Puppeteer library. Today, we will do a similar use case. Today, we will learn how to do form data submission, that is entering data into forms or into any web page fields and submitting them. Very, very interesting because this is one of the classic use case of Puppeteer in terms of automating. A, lo a lot of uh, large scale enterprises automate a lot of their workflows every now and then. So this is the, the episode if you want to learn how to automate and do form submission. Let's get started. This is part 11 of the series. If you haven't checked out the first 10 parts, you should check them out in order to learn and master Puppeteer with me. I have covered everything that you need from basic to advanced use cases so far and I plan to co cover another around 25 episodes including some hands-on advanced projects. So make sure that you are following the entire series. So what are we going to do today? We are going to do the similar steps that we do every time. First is launching the Puppeteer, then browser new page, then go to a URL. Then this is, this is where things will get interesting today. We will learn how to focus on a particular element by finding it by ID. And then we will do the keyboard dot type. That means we are entering some data and then we are doing the keyboard dot press and waiting for it to navigate and get the results. Interesting because you can apply this for any website of your choice. Let's that being said, let's get started right into code. All right. Um, as always, first thing I'll do is create the new file episode 11 right dot js okay so what we are going to do is we'll start writing first the basic stuff that is to import the puppeteer and puppeteer equal to require puppeteer all right now that we have imported let's write our async function and let's name it enter um, form data okay enter form data and I will pass a URL and we will enter some search query that we want to enter it into a form okay so for the sake of this example I am going to pass my URL as google.com and we will search something okay using automation all right so we will do a try catch and we will do a try catch here and in the catch we are going to do a console.log error all right and we'll just do an error and say that what was the error we'll figure out all right and then in the try first let's launch the browser instance and i'm going to serve it here await puppet here dot launch once you have launched the page then you will create the page right so you'll say page equal to await browser instance dot new page I'm sure by now if you're following this series all of you must be by hearted with all these basic methods that are inbuilt so everybody whoever works on it on a daily basis I'm sure you will get used to it all right so now I'm saying go to google.com okay that's my URL that's what I'm going to pass so I'm going to write const URL equal to HTTPS Google com okay what I want is it will go there and search for the page and enter some query and automatically should go to the search results page so this this it will come to this page so now I need to identify this element so I'm going to inspect and see this is the page right if you search for this it will show you that this is a text bar text area right it's a text area and by the name as Q right so the unique the name of this particular field element is given is called Q so we will use that so I'm going to say dot focus that means focus on which element okay so here I'm saying focus on input whose name is equal to Q okay so look at this again and this should be double quotes 
and you should close it here and that should be good right so now I'm saying in this page find an element with input it's an input element and you are trying to find name equal to Q okay that's what we are trying to do and once we have that what we will do is await page dot keyboard dot type right and we are going to do search query that's the value that we will be sending right once we have that we will have to wait for the page or let's say keyboard dot press enter okay here we are telling the keyboard that it's like a ADA accessibility right you will you're telling that focus on that input whose name is Q and then what you should do is keyboard page dot keyboard dot type type the value that we will send and page dot keyboard dot press enter okay now once it is done it's all await right so it will wait for it and then we will wait for it to navigate so I'm going to write wait page dot wait for navigation that's one of the thing and you should tell it like for till wait till what so you'll say wait until network is idle okay that means wait till you receive the data and the page navigation has completed and then I might also want to do the screenshot okay since we have learned that as well so use it so I'm going to say um, query query dot png okay and finally we are going to close the browser okay so these are the steps we are doing I'm going to close this to show you better so here first we are opening the creating a browser instance then we are creating a new page we are telling it to go to the URL which is google.com that's what we are we will pass and then we are saying in the page focus on input name equal to Q and wait for the keyboard and type the search query then keyboard dot press enter that means hit enter wait for the navigation wait for the page to navigate and complete once it is done do a screenshot of the re query results let's say query results dot png I don't have any file like that so it's unique and then finally close the browser right and before closing we'll give a message and say form data submitted successfully right perfect so now let's call this method here and say enter form data and what are we going to say is sunrise okay Surya right so sunrise that's what we'll do and we have everything we have the URL and we have the query the ideal way is to always have it here close it never directly pass it in the method we all make that mistake every now and then <coughs> all right perfect so this looks good let's go ahead and run it and how do you run it you run it by typing the command node followed by the episode the file name basically the file this file name is episode hyphen 11 js let's run it puppet here is running uh, headless true no element found for selector input name equal to Q let's see why oh see it's I thought it's an input but it's a text area right that's why it is telling no input element found so let's fix that so uh, now I will say find a text area with the name Q right so basically selector so you need to give the proper selector wh whichever one you want and since we did not mention it headless open or not so that's why it's uh, we can't really see it in action but let's see if it creates one uh, it has not yet completed I believe but I would love to see that so let's close it here and in the options headless false 
that way we can see what is happening in the page so it will try and open the chromium browser and it has entered sunshine so see it entered and then okay something went wrong maybe that is not allowed or some error happened navigation failed because browser has disconnected okay browser has disconnected and I'm suspecting that such automation thing I don't think it will allow uh, <coughs> or let's check if we have done something wrong so we got the browser new page go to URL it entered the search term it did the query param and it also it also got the wait for navigation wait until network idle that is correct this is also correct and then screenshot okay we gave the path query results okay looks like this particular thing is not allowing um, I'll try on a okay I don't know any other let me think of some other let's try this one and see if this helps so here there is a Q ID and name is P right so I'm going to try yahoo.com and see if that allows or is it only for the domain or something else I'm not sure so let's try it out like I said uh, some um, <coughs> some websites will detect that you are trying to run automated script and they'll block it and etc so which is okay so that's why I'm also he hesitant to uh, you know run against anything like that but I think we'll give one last try to yahoo.com and see if it enters it failed it says no selective oh because it's not Q here in Yahoo it is P all right let's run it again so now it opened the page it entered sunrise it entered it we got the search results and it closed so see here query result PNG it, we got the PNG correctly right so Google was not allowing so that why that's why that error came but basically you will run on websites which are real authentic and genuine right you will not do any illegal work please don't do that uh, this tutorial is only for your sake so that you can learn and use it for a good cause that being said now we see that we got the query results dot PNG right so that was our requirement and it entered and got the search results for sunrise that's what we said get the, the query run the query and submit the form right so basically here are the main important methods that you have learned today page dot focus here you'll pass the element on which you want to click and then you would enter some query via keyboard dot type then you would do keyboard dot press which is enter then you would say wait for navigation until and then you would do a page dot screenshot and finally close the browser that's all the things that you need to submit any form across any website like I said please do not do it if for any illegal or wrong reasons please keep it uh, keep the internet safe and be safe that's what I would say try this out and do let me know if you have any queries or questions I'll be happy to help you in the next episode I'm going to talk about HTTP interceptors a uh, very very interesting use case especially when you want to you don't want details to when you work in a large complex enterprise especially bank insurance you want certain details to be um, massaged or processed before you even send the request or do some responses right so that's where HTTP interceptors are really really powerful and helpful we'll learn all about it in the next in the next episode Thank you so much for supporting. Thank you so much for always backing me up. See you in the next episode.